Senator, good to see you again. Senate Republicans say, that, most Senate Republicans at least, probably not you, say that the impeachment case from the House was rushed and it was weak. Judging by some of your votes and some of the articles, though, you saw something different. Well, I didn't, I didn't focus on that as much. I mean, I thought they sent over, and I read it before, to make that first vote, whether we wanted to see anything or hear anything. I thought, uh, I thought they sent over sufficient amount of evidence, along with, you know, the vast majority of the Senate, that they sent over enough that we need to hear something, we need to see something on this. And then once that happened, you know, regardless of what process it took to get it to us, we had a constitutional obligation. And I, you know, I just felt like, okay, I can't let that be a distraction. My focus has to be on the testimony, the evidence, determining the truth so that I can, as we're required to do, be, come up with a truthful verdict. What kind of feedback have you had from constituents here? <laughs> More encouragement than I've had in 17 years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, obviously, you know, there was a lot of money trying to put uh, pressure on this jury, a lot of jury tampering, I guess you would call it. Well, was, was there a lot of that? Did you feel a lot of pressure oh, during that two weeks? I, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't because I had a peace. Uh, you know, I, I would uh, get up as I do and I'd study scripture every morning. You know, I spent a lot of time in prayer. And so I, I really had a peace throughout, but there was a lot of money. I mean, they aired... You know, I don't know what the commercial that they ran during the Republican debate was trying to put pressure on me, but I, it wasn't cheap. And then there were at least two, maybe three mailings into the district. And, you know, I just ran across somebody congratulating me and thanking me uh, for represent them, representing them uh, 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 that was telling me they got text messages. And, and, you know, from all over. So a lot of, you know, some of the Emails and calls we get even today come from Missouri, New Jersey. So there was money spent. Uh, my phone blew up on the floor at one point, filled up my text messages. I didn't look at them. During the trial? Oh, during the trial. I mean, while we're supposed to be deliberating, and try, you were trying the, to tell me how to vote. And you weren't the only one, I'm sure, who got these. No, in, in fact, and the interesting thing there, they're all linked to the same consulting as the Attorney General. Um, you know, Bannon, Lloyd, you know, Davies from um, Dallas, right. linked to, and so there was a commonality there, but there was a lot of money and pressure um, trying to influence uh, those of us that were going to make the decisions. You're not up for re-election until 2026. Do you expect to pay a political price in this district? You know, um, you know a little bit of my history. You know, I suffered with kidney failure for 30 years. One of the things that taught me never knowing with the disease I had whether they would be working or I'd be on dialysis from day to day was to just take it a day at a time. And when you live a day at a time, the most important thing to do is the right thing within the moment. And so I, I, didn't, I didn't worry about the next election. I worried about making sure I did, worked as hard as I could to determine the truth based on the evidence and the testimony to come up with a decision that I could live with, that I felt like the guy that knew my heart um, would direct me towards and that I would represent my constituents properly. We've heard from some of your colleagues that at some point there might have been enough votes to convict or might have been enough votes to, to convict on some articles, but when the, some, some Republicans saw that there weren't enough, did they raise their hand, or lowered their hand, and, and change sides? Did, did that happen? Is that true? I, I think there was movement throughout. Uh, I think we were very close at one point, and and you know one of the things that I don't hear, think you'll hear my colleagues say that voted opposite of what I did, is talking about he's innocent. I mean, you you may hear other things, but I mean people need to understand acquittal doesn't mean innocent. It could mean in their opinion, insufficient evidence. It could mean reasonable doubt. There is a difference, and of course, the fact that he's got legal battles in front of him, this situation's before the grand jury in San Antonio. Um, you know, the courts will have to decide that at that point because we obviously didn't have the votes to impeach. Lieutenant Governor Patrick says the Texas impeachment system in the Constitution needs to be updated and mirror the federal one where the House has to take 
sworn testimony and the accused can be uh, in office until the outcome of the trial. What do you think about that idea? Well, I, I think we should take the experience we have and improve on both sides. I mean, um, for sure, there, there are things I think the House would admit that they would approve upon, things on our side that I think we would approve upon. You know, I, I, having a presiding officer that determines committee assignments and chairmanships, you know, what impact does that have? Did it have any impact at all? We don't know, but I think we both should look at where we can improve. But the last thing I want to do is turn it into a political process that we see in D.C. There are too many people in the, that want to bring elements of D.C. politics to Texas, you know, the partisan divide, that we don't work together, that we're not look, both sides looking for the best uh, for the state of Texas. I'm not interested in bringing D.C. to Texas, and the impeachment process in D.C., while there may be elements that I think would be, could be beneficial, uh, you know, I don't want to turn this into a political process. Looking back now, is there something the House could have done differently? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously. They didn't get the result they were looking for. Well, what should they have done, though? Well, you know, one of the things, we were on a timetable. I think a key witness was the construction guy, Kevin. You know, he was able to avoid subpoenas or you know, they don't know where he is. You know, obviously, I, I believe the federal, you know, federal government will find him and he'll be involved in the grand jury uh, situation. Uh, you know, he wasn't available. We didn't get to hear from Laura Olson and, you know, she, would she have pleaded the fifth? Could she even take the stand? We don't know on that one. Um, and so, and, and there were other documents, I think, that uh, because of the time constraints, they may have been able to get hold of. But bottom line, when you lose, obviously there's something you can do differently. I think the facts were there and the, and the testimony was there. Uh, and, and in my opinion, you know, clearly um, the whistleblowers were in my, very credible. I mean, I think he had assembled a great team and they were looking out for his best interest until they finally realized he wasn't going to listen to them and they felt like they had to go to the FBI. And, and you know, that's proceeding. You know, he delayed any of that from coming out to after the election, uh, which I didn't vote on because I don't know that he did that intentionally. Right. Um, but that's going to come out at some point. Any regrets at all? No. You've had a week to think about all this. I didn't need a week. You know, I'd, I'd prepared properly. Um, I'd searched my heart. Uh, and no, I voted my convictions. I think I did what my constituents wanted me to do to look for the truth, seek the truth, and then stick by my convictions regardless of the consequences. The, the impeachment trial also opened up the division inside the Republican Party of Texas. How, how bad is the divide? Jason, I think it has an opportunity to bring the Republican Party to te of Texas together again. So there's no divide, you don't think? Sure, there's a divide, but you gotta have something, an impetus that brings us together, an impetus that causes us to realize we don't have to settle for somebody doing a good job. We can have somebody that does a good job, that has integrity, that has character, that, that has ethics and a high moral standard, and it's okay to hold us, me, accountable, and we deserve, Texans deserve, elected officials that do a good job in representing their constituents, but have high integrity, high ethics, high moral standard and character, and Texans deserve that and I believe, based on the comments I've received coming back, that there are a lot of Republicans that think it's time to demand, require, and expect both from our elected officials. Senator, thank you. Appreciate it.